Good. 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 Wow. Yeah, well, good, good. Yeah, good. Hi. Yeah, Hello. We are doing Praise fine. God. We are doing fine. Glory to God. We are doing great. Praise no, God. Praise God. God. I'm doing fine. Good morning. Good morning. Good to hear uh, your voices. And uh, so happy that uh, different ones of us, we are connecting from uh, so many parts of the world. How exciting. Uh, and uh, once again, welcome. OK, good to know people are doing well. People are doing well by God's grace. Wow, wonderful. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever is applicable <laughs> where you are. OK, so uh, let's get started with a word of prayer today uh, would any of us like to lead in prayer please how about Ruben Ruben would you like to lead in prayer today father I just want to thank you for this opportunity that you have given each and every one of us to learn and to know more about the things that you are going to show us father God and Lord I just pray that you give us the spirit of understanding and the spirit of revelation according to the deep and intimate knowledge of you, Lord. Open the eyes of our understanding and open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, that we may know the hope of your calling to which you have called us, Father God. And I pray for your spirit to help us and guide us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And thank you. Thank you, Reuben. Uh, yeah. Uh, so let's continue where we stopped in the last class. We talked about the fact that, you know, prayer is uh, communication with God, but it's more than that. You know, it's communion, it's ministry, it's warfare. Uh, and uh, we also looked at the fact that we can release our God given authority through prayer. OK, this was originally intended by God, uh, but due to sin, Man lost uh, his authority. Uh, however, the Lord Jesus, through his work on the cross, bought that authority back for us. So now, as believers and as children of God, we can exercise it. And one of the ways in which we can exercise it is through prayer. And we also saw how God has chosen to depend on our prayers. Now, God is sovereign. He can, if he wants to do many things, but you know, he has uh, uh, chosen to have us as partners and co-workers. So in many uh, cases, you know, if we do not pray, right, if we do not pray, uh, then you maybe th there are some things that uh, we know have been promised over our lives, but those things may not actually come to pass because we have not done our part of praying. And that's what we uh, talked about in the previous class. And today, I want to touch upon some of the foundations for prayer. You know, when we uh, use the term foundation, a building can stand or fall based on the foundation. Okay, so if you have a good foundation, if you have a deep foundation, uh, you can build very high and uh, the building can be stable for years, decades. I don't know. Some buildings uh, are quite strong for centuries, right? And uh, they've been made into museums also these days. So the foundation is very important. We can have the right foundation for prayer or we could also have the wrong foundation for prayer. Now, what is the wrong foundation? for prayer it is the wrong understanding of what prayer is so uh would you like to share with me what some uh wrong concepts uh, are about prayer you know people people may think prayer is that but actually it's not can i share something yes please yes yes yeah uh, people say prayer is letting God know about our problems, but I don't think prayer is that. I believe God knows everything. It's just okay. we're acting our faith on it. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Jeffina. Thank you for sharing um, uh, your opinion. So uh, Jeffina says that it's not just it's about you know letting uh, God know your problems. Yes, yes, Abu Bakr, please go ahead. Some people believe prayer is begging. 
And why mm, not? It's mm, not begging. Okay. It's a way yeah. of expressing. So mm, some people mm. believe they are when they are praying, they are begging God to do something. Mm, mm, mm. And that is yes, wrong, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So that is not what prayer is. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. So prayer is not begging. What what else? Any wrong concepts about prayer? Sometimes yeah. when we uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I heard two voices. Maybe Divya can go first and the next person after that. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, so I think sometimes when we pray, we just keep on talking um, and we don't pause to listen what God is speaking. Uh, so yeah, uh, we forget that it is two ways. Uh, we just think it is one way communication. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Divya. Thank you. So uh, it's not just one way, but it is both ways. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Someone else wanted to share? Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Yes, yes, Joash. Yeah. So, like, some people believe, like, uh, prayer is chanting, and some people just pray in tongues. Mm. Like, it's something which I've observed in churches, like the Catholic Church and uh, Pentecostal mm. churches. So, like, uh, I don't know whether it's right or wrong, but just that will not suffice, is what I believe. Like, people have to, like, mm. pray from their heart as well, like, not just chant. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Joash. So, it's not just chanting, saying something, and your heart is not connected to it. Mm. What else? What else is wrong? Ma'am, I would like to say. Yes, yes, Rosalind. Prayer is not uh, asking God when we need something. Mm -hmm. We can also come to God, even if we uh, don't need anything, we can come to Him and just lift Him up and just praise Him, worship Him and uh, glorify Him without mm -hmm. any need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, so true, so true. Because it's a relationship, right? It's not just like, uh, uh, you know, you have that concept, right? Like a genie. Whatever you want, you ask, you'll get it. So if you want something, you go to God. But that's not what prayer is. Uh, so thank you for sharing, Rosalind. And uh, Lubega, uh, would you like to share, please? Some people Hello. take prayer. Uh, 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 let Lubega go first, please, and then okay, uh, after okay. you could follow uh, after that. Yes, thank you. Okay. Some yeah. some people take prayer to be like a ritual, like uh, they have mm -hmm. to do it mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. But I think prayer should be in driven. It needs when God, you hear the Spirit of the Lord talking to you. I think you should, it should be something. It's like a life that you, a person should do it as he feels in himself, but not as mm. a ratio. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lubega. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. So prayer shouldn't be a ritual. Okay. It must, you must be led by God. Okay, uh, Afuye, please go ahead. Sorry to have interrupted you earlier. Okay, good morning. Good morning, mm -hmm. everybody. How are we all doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. prayer, prayer, prayer is meant to be a relationship. Mm -hmm. Prayer is meant to be an addicted act. Mm -hmm. But some people take prayer to be money when you use in going to supermarkets mm -hmm. to make your shopping. <laughs> so they take prayer to be to be in the replacement of money. You go to supermarket, you shop whatever you want from the shop from the shop of God. Then you come back to your home. You mm. shop whenever you want something. You go to supermarket, you shop, and you come back to your home. You mm. don't go back to the supermarket to make your shopping if you don't consume the first item you have. For example, if you are buying a tin of a tin of tea. If you don't finish or consume that tin of tea, you don't go back to the supermarket to make a shopping. It is when you finish that you remember, I have to go to supermarket. So when they don't consume 
what they first receive from God through prayer, they don't remember to pray again. Mm. So mm -hmm. it's supposed to be an addicted life. Even in your dream, you mm. should be praying. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Fuye. Yeah, it's quite uh, passionate <laughs> sharing there. Uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Ruben, you, you want to say something? Did you want to add to that? No, Basa. Oh, okay, fine. I thought you had unmuted. Okay, all right. So thank you, everyone, uh, for um, putting across your thoughts. Yes, there are... Uh, several such wrong concepts about prayer uh, and I, I will you know uh, go ahead and list out uh, a, f a few some that you've already mentioned and some new ones which prayer is not so the first thing that is common uh, for for many of us is the thought that prayer can be like a ritual Okay, and that probably happens because we come from a background where we have seen prayer being done at certain times and not necessarily uh, involving your heart, but, you know, just doing it because it's supposed to be done. Uh, even in school, uh, uh, teachers have a time, they give you a time and they say, okay, assembly time, now you pray. Uh, now lunchtime, you pray. So we get into that, you know, doing it as per time and uh, doing it as a ritual. But of course, we are quite clear that prayer is not a ritual. Prayer is not an obligation or a religious duty. Okay, so God, uh, Jesus talked about prayer as being very important uh, in his relationship with the Father, but he never once made it sound like it was an obligation. You know, uh, obligation is, is like you don't want to do it, but you have to do it. Okay, it was never that. For Jesus, he always enjoyed spending time with the Father, and it was a delight. So, uh, prayer uh, should never be an obligation or become something like a duty. Prayer is also not lip service. Okay, we we uh, some of us mentioned that and said that people pray, but they don't really mean it. It's not from the heart. Now, when we do that. Obviously, you know, God is God and he is omniscient. He knows everything. He even discerns and understands the hearts of men. Uh, one of us, I think Jeffina, you, you mentioned that, that God already knows what is in our hearts. So uh, just because we're supposed to pray, we mustn't give him some lip service and say, okay, God, you know, uh, okay, I worship you. I will do this for you, this, this, this. And we don't mean it. Uh, it, it there, there, is, there is no thought behind it. There is no intention behind that. So lip service is not what God is looking for. So if prayer ends up being just lip service in our lives, uh, we, we, we must repent of that uh, and turn around. So it's not lip service. Uh, and prayer also does not mean uh, that, you know, we can twist God's arm. Now, I remember from my own experience, there was one point in my uh, journey where, you know, I was trying to understand what is this prayer thing? Can I pray about anything that I want uh, and all of that? And at that time, I remember a friend of mine, she said, hey, whatever you want, you just fast for 21 days. Okay, you fast, you pray for 21 days uh, and make sure, you know, you, you just like bombard God, and at the end of 21 days, you'll get it, okay? Uh, but then now when I think of it, at that point, it sounded great. But for me, right now, it sounds like twisting God's arm, right? So whatever I want, if, if, I, if I go to God just to manipulate him and get it, that's not what prayer is. That's not the right foundation for prayer. And that's not why we should be using prayer. So don't twist God's arm. Uh, and prayer is also not a shot in the dark where we say, okay, I'm going to pray. You know how uh, some of us do this? Uh, yeah, I want to be blessed in my work. Uh, but for example, if you're doing a presentation and uh, you're not sure how it's going to go, but you just say, okay, God, I'll pray. You, uh, you bless me. But within our hearts, we're thinking, if this doesn't go well, then I'll do that. Okay, if this happens, you know, then maybe I'll do that. We have our backup plans. and We are not clear 
that okay i have worked hard i've prayed i've done the right thing sincere thing god will bless my work we don't have that confidence or that faith but we have all kinds of uh, you know plan b and c uh, because we don't believe uh, that this prayer is effective so prayer is not that just give it a try okay just let god know we'll see if he wants he'll do if he doesn't do okay we have some other backup plan so prayer is not a shot in the dark and prayer is not to prove one's spirituality that we are superior okay uh, again uh, i'm sure some of us can relate to this whenever i used to be asked to pray in public i'll get scared oh no what will people think maybe people will think i'm not spiritual enough uh, i'm not saying the right scriptures i'm not using the right words right uh, but that's not what prayer is meant for no to show your your level of spirituality to show your superiority to use a certain language right sometimes we prefer to pray in the king james version and think that oh god is so impressed people are so impressed but that is a, a in the bible we see jesus talk about the pharisees who love to go and pray outside but he tells them to go and pray in secret because prayer is not about uh, displaying our superiority uh, over others and displaying our spirituality okay so that is not the right uh, the, the right foundation for prayer and prayer without knowing god's instructions uh, on prayer also can be weak okay uh, what do i mean by that see in scripture uh, uh, god says you know whatever you ask in the name of jesus i will do it for you so when we are praying and we pray with that powerful authoritative name of jesus in faith that becomes effective now if i don't understand that if i don't understand that okay the name of jesus means this this and this and so it's powerful and if i don't understand oh faith means this and therefore it makes my prayer powerful what happens i just pray whatever i know whatever my understanding yeah i think prayer is this and i just go about it in that manner i will miss out on many benefits that i can uh, experience uh, provided i know the word of god regarding prayer as uh you know an important uh, aspect of our lives okay and uh, while uh, praying the wrong thing to do is also to be very conscious about our eloquence very conscious about you know uh, the display aspect of it because ultimately uh, prayer is about connecting with god you know maybe uh, there are times when we didn't say the right words but that is the most effective prayer uh, that uh, you and i may have prayed so don't get too worried uh, about the eloquence of prayer okay all right so now uh, let us look at the right foundations <coughs> for prayer so so far we took some time to discuss all the things um uh, that don't make our prayer life effective okay uh, but what what are the aspects that do make our prayer life very very effective so in our notes here i am uh, doing chapter 2 chapter 3 today which is foundation for prayer and uh, there are seven uh, such aspects uh, that have been listed that will make our prayer life super strong so we will go over each one of them i will first list them out uh, for us the first one is to understand the nature of god the second is to develop intimacy with god the third one is to understand the redemptive heart of god the fourth one is to know the promises of god the fifth one is to partner with the holy spirit the sixth one is to know our position in christ 
and the seventh one is to live a life of surrender now all seven of these aspects you know if if we can um, grow in our understanding of, of these aspects uh, incorporating this into our prayer lives then we will find that you know our prayer life is being strengthened uh, our relationship with god is being strengthened uh, and we will see much fruit uh, by engaging in prayer so let's begin with the first uh, foundational truth here which is to understand the nature of god now some of us gave examples where we said you know we go to god as if you know we're going to purchase something as if you know we we have a shopping list and we just say okay god i want this this and this just give it to me why does that happen why do you think that happens any thoughts um i believe it's because uh we grew up like that like we have seen people who go to god when they need something and mm. when our parents teach us when you need you pray but after mm. we get into the bible we learn that it's more than that mm mm yep thank you thank you jeffina so we gain that understanding from our experiences we've seen people do that and we've been taught that so we follow it uh, but while doing something like that you know just telling god okay i need this x y and z i need it who do you think god is hello everyone in the house hello yes yeah. yes i feel uh, yeah why why we do that is because our mentality mm. we have a very shallow understanding we have always believed prayer is just meant for when you need something yes that is when you go to god like yes. i said before we have turned god to a supermarket where we just go for shopping mm. when you enter supermarket you buy what you want to buy you go back home you forget about god we have always believed it is only when we need something we we'll pray if we don't mm. need anything it doesn't matter we we'll forget about prayer that is why i said prayer should be addicted it should be a lifestyle not mm. just when you need something it should be a lifestyle even when you are walking on the road you should be communicating mm -hmm. and this is it somebody you have no relationship with you mm. can't pray you can't make a request it is when you have a relationship like a father to son a mother to son relationship that is mm. when you communicate better but when you don't have a relationship the means of communication will definitely break and there's going to be a gap so our mentality and understanding is prayer is only meant for when you need something thank you mm. very much okay yes thank you uh, thank you afuye so uh, i see there that you know you made this point as well uh, that we must understand what kind of relationship we have with god uh, if we don't then that makes us you know pray in a very shallow way and afuye pointed out and he said that um, like a father uh, and a and a son relationship or a mother and and a child relationship so the understanding of god you know when we realize that he is not just uh just the provider up there in heaven who is going to respond to our needs if we have that understanding of god only that understanding of god you no know, we haven't we haven't uh, grasped who god is at all but when we deeply uh, recognize the proper nature of god that's when our response to him also begins to change you know, one small example when jesus uh, uh, taught his disciples you know, the disciples asked um, jesus and they said teach us how to pray okay uh, and then jesus said okay this is how you must pray our father uh, okay let me just stop okay yeah sorry about that i think somebody was uh unmuted so i i just muted them apologies i i would need to mute if uh, uh, you know there there is interruption so please don't mind that okay so i was saying jesus taught his disciples to pray 
in this manner our father who art in heaven so what was jesus is understanding of god jesus called god in heaven as father so the nature of god to jesus was father and that changed the way jesus prayed but before jesus the disciples would know how people prayed in the temple how pe people prayed in the synagogue right in a very ritualistic way but when jesus brought this understanding our father in heaven the nature of god as a father became clear to the disciples all right so what i'm trying to say is see for us to have the right approach uh, for prayer we need to understand the correct nature of god and where is this nature revealed to us it is revealed to us in the word of god as you study the word of god you begin to recognize oh wow um, jesus moved with compassion uh, when he saw people who were sick okay he is compassionate you know you realize that uh, god so loved the world he hung on the cross uh, he he died for our our sins you know he bore uh, he he carried my wounds uh, he carried my my griefs so then you then you realize you know how god loves you the nature of god and then you begin to see so many other things how god dealt with israel how god dealt with his people and you see oh he is righteous he is a just god you know he he is uh, the god of truth uh he uh, is is the god of uh, mercy he is the god of so in that way you know you begin to build this this image of god based on the word of god and that helps you uh, reach out to god correctly in prayer because if you don't have that understanding of the nature of god then you don't know how to approach him and you don't know how to respond to him as well so through his word we can know the nature of god the nature of god is also revealed through the covenant names of god okay there are some uh, uh, names of god with the jehova title jehova shalom jehova rafa jehova jaire jehova uh, sitkenu you know jehova uh, so many things roi so these are known as the covenant names of god because through these names god promised uh, to the children of israel that he would be their peace he would be their healer he would be their provider you know he would be uh, their protector so on and so forth so through those covenant names also we recognize oh this is who our god is so when when i am uh, disturbed i go to the lord in prayer because i understand he is jehova shalom he has a covenant of peace with me so the understanding of who god is is very very crucial and similarly the person of the lord jesus christ we must have a good understanding of that once again where are you going to get this understanding from the word of god so we delve deep into the word of god when we study god's word we meditate on it and see ah oh, wow this is what jesus said i am the way the truth and the life so you meditate on it you begin to paint your picture of the nature of god based on scripture because that is the correct picture that we uh, that we can have and when we have the right picture you know we will also go to god in prayer in the right way so you know we will begin by worshiping him we will begin by adoring him thanking him honoring him first of all for who he is and how faithful he is you know how how powerful he is how glorious he is and then you know because because we know that's who he is but also we know he is our provider so we would you know go to him and say uh, god i am in need this is my situation you have promised in your word that you are my victory banner jehova nissi so in jesus name i pray for victory in this situation so you see my right understanding of the nature of god puts me in a better place for a uh, right relationship with god right way of relating in prayer right way of uh, you know seeing the fruit of prayer so that is the first foundation if we want to have a strong prayer life we should have a good and a clear understanding a scriptural understanding of who god is so know the nature of god that is the first thing the second thing is develop intimacy with god god uh, as jesus introduced to us is our father and uh, just think about it 
no he could have been introduced in so many other ways like uh, jesus could have said oh just king uh, who art in heaven hallowed be thy name and that is that is good that is that is uh, okay for us to relate to but he used the term father heavenly father a father who art in heaven now when you use the word father you know all of us can can uh, uh, confirm this and say the relationship is stronger the relationship is deeper somehow right so that intimacy that intimacy is required for us to develop that relationship and friendship with god and when we develop that friendship with god you know our prayer life uh, is is uh, uh, growing you know our prayer life is effective now we we see so many passages uh, in the bible that talk about intimacy with god you now john chapter 15 is that classic passage okay john 15 and verse 7 again okay, somebody read it please it is there in your notes uh, and i am on uh, page 9 so the top of that page john 15 and verse 7 john 15:7 if yes, you please. abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you Yes, thank you, thank you, um, uh, Zeli Toli. So we are being invited to abide. You know, abide is to stay. It is to dwell, right? It is to be with close. It it is to stay put. Uh, and in that same passage, we will understand that we are called to be connected in a very intimate way with God. You know, Jesus says, "I am the vine; you are the branches." obviously the the branches cannot exist without connection with the vine so he's calling us for a deep connection and he's saying as long as you have that deep connection you know my life will flow into you you will bear fruit there will be fruit on you right the branches are the ones parts that bear fruit but why is all this happening because of the connection because of the relationship because of the friendship because of the intimacy okay so intimacy is key in our prayer life without uh, relating to god in in that kind of a close way you know it just becomes um it just becomes a practice uh, of some sort and that that's not what the bible uh, teaches us to do but god wants us to relate to him in a close way okay uh, and obviously when we we relate to him in that manner we will open up our hearts we will also delight in prayer it will not be uh, 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 you know something that like burden that god has uh, put on us but we we will be happy to go into his presence and we will worship and pray and honor him so intimacy is extremely important uh, and let us also note in in scripture that god has actually called us to fellowship with the godhead so yes we relate with uh, the father but we also closely relate with the son we also closely see we are told when you become a believer right you are joined together with christ you become one spirit with him so that kind of a closeness a believer has with the father with the son and of course the holy spirit who is living inside of us right uh, and uh, in second corinthians 13 and verse 14 paul says uh, uh, he says the uh, the grace of god the love of the father and the sweet communion koinonia of the holy spirit koinonia is fellowship time partnership with the holy spirit so we can relate deeply and closely with the father we can relate deeply with the son we can relate deeply with the holy spirit and we have been invited to a place of close communion and fellowship with the father the son and the holy spirit and when we look at prayer in this manner it becomes a delight uh, and jesus you know he had developed this in his walk whenever he related to the father you notice you know he he would he would just call out to the father father you know this is what i'm asking you you already know my heart okay and, and also you we will study about the life of jesus and his his prayer life uh, but just a few 
thoughts over here you know he would spend extended times uh, during the night early hours in the morning with the father what was he actually doing he had that intimate relationship with god and that made uh, his prayer life very very effective and that is something we too must look to do uh, for our own selves so develop intimacy with god okay uh, develop uh, that that close connection with god now some of the key things that are necessary for uh, an intimate relationship with god firstly it is communion okay communion means connecting relating um uh you you are spending time with god okay now uh, for example if we join a workplace or uh, for for some students here you would relate better to school okay when you start going to school initially you don't know anybody but when you start spending time with people over there you know some of them they're not just your core students anymore but you call them friends and uh, some are termed as best friends even Okay, similarly at the workplace they're just colleagues but maybe over time you say hey that's my friend how did it happen you spoke to that person you related to that person you spent time with that person right and that fellowship that communion caused the development of that friendship so in the same way when we want to develop intimacy with god <coughs> excuse me uh we have to spend time with god you know it's great to get information like you know, uh, we are attending this class we read some books about on prayer all that's wonderful but at the end of the day it has to be put to practice so you spend time with god you commune with god that personal intimacy personal worship and you will find that you know you you uh, your prayer life is becoming stronger transparency is also very very important <coughs> please excuse me yeah so transparency is important uh, uh there there are two passages uh, that have been um, referenced here one is from psalm 139 uh, and uh, psalm 51 as well uh, and in both these passages we see that you know god wants truth in the innermost parts so when i go to god with pretense you know god might be dealing with me about uh, a sinful habit or a wrong attitude maybe i'm very proud maybe i'm very arrogant okay and the holy spirit is convicting me of these things but when i go to god in prayer and i just you know put it somewhere uh, in <clears throat> Uh, uh the recesses of my mind i forget about it and i say okay i know the steps for prayer the principles of prayer i will pray i will worship i will cry i will do everything and then just come out of prayer but transparency is missing the thing that god is dealing with at that point i am not willing to accommodate i am not willing to repent i am not willing to change right so that transparency also strengthens the relationship see whatever i'm saying is is you can learn that from a human relationship also but uh, we must be truthful and faithful in our relationship with god and that gives us uh, immense strength in our relationship and our prayer then uh, somebody mentioned today listening to him okay so listening to him is also important for us to develop intimacy how do we listen to god uh, of course from logos which is already the revealed word of god which we have in the form of the bible but we can also receive from god or hear from god or hear his voice uh, through the rema or the quickened word of god you know sometimes uh, <coughs> god impresses certain things on our hearts and we know uh, uh, when that it is in line with scripture and that is the voice of god that is the rema word of god speaking to us but we listen to it okay so we speak but also god speaks back to us and <clears throat> to develop intimacy there can also be the practice of what we call as waiting abiding or soaking in the presence of god by this what we do is we just we just spend time 
right we just enjoy god's presence now <clears throat> psalm 42 that's a classic example you know where the psalmist says that uh, as a deer pants for for waters you know i i pant for you oh god you know i'm so thirsty for you oh god i'm waiting on you psalm 63 is another good example where uh, you know the uh, where david writes and he says that lord uh, i am looking for you you know in, including my flesh my soul my flesh every part of me is actually looking for you waiting for you i'm longing for you so to develop intimacy we can also uh, make time to just wait on the lord just spend time in his presence and in this way you know we are strengthening our relationship with him and whenever we strengthen our relationship with him you know whenever you have somebody who's very close what ends up happening you know they are comfortable to open up to you they are comfortable to reveal maybe some of the secret things as well okay and the same thing can be expected when we draw closer and closer to god we find that <clears throat> not only will we get to know his nature very well not only will we uh, understand his plans clearly his purposes uh, in a clearer way but also some of the secrets of his heart okay we would be able to receive by this i don't mean you know some kind of an additional weird revelation outside of his word no that's not what i mean but from the word of god in line with the word of god in line with the work of the holy spirit you know god can uh, give us new revelation and we can receive that so that becomes an overflow of intimacy with god we also might have times where we feel that hey i'm encountering god in a special way i'm encountering god in a in a new and powerful way okay uh, <clears throat> and this overflow of intimacy could also demonstrate itself in us doing the works that god wants done you know when we don't have a strong relationship uh, uh, with you know uh, like let's say a, a family member for example if i uh, use this um, a husband and wife right like they they got married before they got married things were different but once they got married you know you would find that they do things as per their decision together okay so uh, let's say uh, the the wife is used to purchasing a certain kind of vegetables all the time when when she was alone that's what she would do when she was unmarried but now that they are married they together they have a preference okay these are the kind of vegetables we will use in our cooking so she does those works because there is that relationship there is that strong relationship uh, between the two of them and it manifests in the things that she does for the couple for the family and in the same way when we grow close to god and intimate with god the kind of life that we live the kind of heart that we develop for the ministry that the kind of uh, you know passion we develop for the purposes of god you know we begin to manifest the works of god and 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 not just you know in preaching and teaching but also the release of the power of the holy spirit in signs wonders miracles healings deliverances all that begins to happen through us and that can only come from a place of intimacy uh, and definitely you know fruitfulness in every area of our lives so in this manner we can develop intimacy and see the results of intimacy now there can be some barriers to intimacy okay and what are some of these barriers the first one is sin consciousness now if we do not have a proper understanding of who jesus is what he has done for us on the cross who we are in christ jesus when we come to god in prayer we might come uh, <coughs> with a sense of guilt right and when there's a sense of guilt weighing you down what happens you don't feel like opening up you want to hide things okay and you feel that god is actually not listening but is that the truth not at all scripturally god has already done what it takes to forgive our sins it is us who have not received it completely and 
uh, had the revelation uh, that God has forgiven us. So that sin consciousness will prevent us from having a strong and a deep relationship with God. So that is something we can overcome by renewing our minds to who we have now become in Christ Jesus. Here's the second thing that can be a hindrance, a lack of discipline. <clears throat> what happens? We never really make time for prayer. Okay, we, we're saying that uh, communion, it's built, uh, you know, uh, like the relationship is built over time, fellowship, communion. How can that happen without time? So if we are just going about our lives thinking, okay, if I have time, then I'll pray. We don't, we, we are missing out. Okay. Uh, so if we plan for it and say, hey, wow, prayer is, I, I need to spend time in prayer. So I'm setting aside this time for prayer. You are actually disciplining yourself and you are putting in that kind of effort in your relationship with God. And that relationship is being strengthened and intimacy is being developed. The next thing here that can hinder intimacy is busyness. Okay, Martha and Mary, uh, you you are familiar with that. When um, you know we uh, just uh, want to do things for God, but never really spend time with God. You know that is very dangerous. We could also end up doing this in the ministry where we are serving God and serving God and serving God, but are at the cost of our um, you know, personal walk with the Lord, our personal relationship with the Lord. What might end up happening if we do that? Sooner or later, we will be burnt out. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so, we must be careful uh, to not let busyness take over our lives, even in the area of ministry. Now, I know uh, uh, many of us, we are busy with all the right things, but please. Uh, don't let that hinder uh, making time for God. Okay. The next thing that can be a hindrance is incorrect heart condition. So that refers to attitudes. We can have bitterness in our hearts, unforgiveness in our hearts, or, or strife, competition, and go to God with all these things within us. What happens? Even if God wants to minister to us, we are unable to receive because our heart is not uh, kept pure before the Lord. So these things uh, will really interfere with our intimacy. Then there is the spirit of heaviness. Okay, Spirit of heaviness or confusion. What happens is uh, we, we don't feel free uh, in God's presence. But there's always maybe something from the past or something from... Um, you know, the way we are thinking and processing things, uh, something from, you know, uh, so many things, right? Like that that really uh, weigh heavy on you. So that spirit of heaviness will also prevent you from enjoying the presence of God. So I've just um, touched on two topics today because it's, it's very, very important, but we will pick up pace as we go forward. But I want you to think about all these right foundations. One is the nature of God. So when I develop the right image of who God is based on his word, then it is easier for me to relate to him in the right way. And secondly, uh, you know, we said that, uh, okay, intimacy with God, not doing prayer as a ritual. Instead, we... Uh, uh, are close to God and thereby, you know, our, our prayer life is fruitful. So these are the first two uh, foundations. We will look at the uh, other five in the next section. Uh, <clears throat> I know we have run out of time. Okay, I, I can see Sitkeno's comment here. Okay, sure, Sitkeno. Uh, yeah, you, you can go ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts, any thoughts, questions, comments before we wrap up today's class? Just a few more minutes, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for the for the opportunity. God bless you, Pastor. We thank, really thank appreciate you. you. We really thank appreciate you. you. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you. One, yes. one, thing, one thing I wanted to put in is this. Huh. Uh, I am I am a assembly pastor in my church. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And uh, through counseling, we we see a lot of things and we hear a lot of things. Mm. Uh, I have once sat one on one with a particular woman who was stating categorically that if God did not answer her prayer in the next two months, mm. she's going to burn her Bible down. She's going to put fire on her Bible and stop coming to church. You can mm-hmm. imagine. Mm-hmm. See the kind of sentiment, see the kind of shallow understanding. So I mm-hmm. told her, if, if you are putting fire on your Bible, you are only burning your Bible. You are not burning my own Bible. Mm-hmm. It, doesn't, it doesn't change my, my stand with God. It's only mm-hmm. change your own stand with God. So that is why we, I, I usually tell people, understand the indictment of the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Number one, have the Word of God in you. When you have the Word of God in you, when you have the understanding of the word of God, when you have an intimacy with God, every mm. other thing comes easy. Like mm. we have been pointed, intimacy, relationship. Yes. When mm. you have intimacy, when you have a very cordial relationship, you understand the person you are dealing with. Mm. Even mm. if you are praying for a particular thing and mm. God is not releasing that thing for you, you should have an understanding that God is not releasing to you at that particular time because there might be danger ahead. Mm. So you should understand the person you are dealing with. When you understand God very well, when you have a cordial relationship with him, you will understand praying is good. Praying, yes. should, be a, praying should be an habit. Mm. Praying is what right. you should do. What is comfortable, when it is comfortable for you, when it is not comfortable for you. Even when you are walking on the road, you should be praying, you should be laughing, you should be gisting. When husband and wife are talking, they are gisting, there is a lot of laugh. That is how it should be with God. It should Mm. be with God. We are praying with God, not everything. Yes, you are welcome. Yes, yes. welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Afuye. Thank you. Uh, Yeah, so uh, the, um, thank you for sharing that. And what Afuye is saying is a good relationship. Right, a good and intimate relationship, uh, just like our human relationships, is uh, what we need with God, and that needs to be developed. Okay. So, uh, any any uh, other questions, if if at all? Or okay, yes, yeah. Yes, Divya. Uh, I have a question. You can uh, maybe you can take it up next uh, class uh, as well. <clears throat> I was just wondering, like we mm, continue to pray for certain things for which we have not received an answer yet. So when we are like uh, you know continuously praying for it, does it mean that uh, we have not laid it uh, at God's feet? Uh, we are just you know simply. Just praying, uh, if at all it happens, let it happen. That kind of an attitude. So what should be our course of action in such uh, such prayer requests? Uh, yes, thanks, Divya. Uh, we will uh, look at it in depth later. But this comes under the category of persistent prayer. Okay, And Jesus, in his teachings, he taught about how men should not lose heart, but they should pray and he also gave the example of this uh, uh, you know this poor widow who goes to an unjust king uh, many times and finally what happens he grants her request because she's bothering him okay but jesus shared this uh, to let us know that if an unjust king could respond okay to persistent petitioning in this manner how much quicker our heavenly father so there is nothing wrong with bringing a prayer request to god often uh, and even repeating it because uh, you're not doing it as a ritual you're doing it sincerely from your heart you're praying about that matter till you see a breakthrough in that matter and there is nothing wrong with that okay okay thank you thank you Pastor. yes thank you All right. Okay. So, uh, class, uh, what we will do is we will uh, we will close the session. However, uh, if you have questions, I encourage you to post it on the stream page for the Google Meet students. You please post it on the stream page, and I can uh, post answers to it right there, and even the other students can see and learn from it. All right. So we will uh, wrap up, and uh, thank you once again. 
for uh, being a part of this class and i hope you enjoyed it you learned something and you're growing in your prayer life okay so god bless you and uh, uh, bye for now have a wonderful weekend thank you man. thank you pastor thank you thank you thank, thank you, you pastor thank you god bless bye bye thank you asha silitoli divya bye thank you pastor thank bye. you pastor thank you thank you yeah malongo mm. bye bye god bless okay ma'am thank you thank bye you. bye thank you brother avdesh bye god bless